Hello students, today's topic is earth movements. In this particular video, we are going to study about the earth movements, how are the landforms created, what are the vertical movements, what are the horizontal movements and also we will study about tensional and compressional forces. So let's begin with the earth movements. So as uh, we can see, there are so many landforms present on the earth like hills, mountains, plateaus, valleys. So how are these landforms created? These landforms are created because of the movement which are created or the earth is undergoing some particular movement whether it is horizontal movement or vertical movement and why this movement exactly occurs this movement exactly occurs because of the external as well as the internal forces which are exerted on the earth so the surface of the earth is in dynamic it has moving it has been moving vertically and horizontally since the origin of the earth there are major changes in the distribution of continents as well as ocean you all know that the, uh, the earth is covered by land surface and it is covered by water surface so we have continents and we have ocean the earth has experienced innumerable earth movements which have brought about vast change in the surface so the lithosphere it is a broken uh, layer which is under the earth crust and it has number of plates then that is called as lithospheric plates the movement and interaction of these plates causes the changes on the surface as these lithosphere is also called as an upper mantle region so these plates they are broken into pieces so because of that pieces uh, they always carry out some or the other movement and which makes the change on the surface of the earth and the force which acts in the interior of the earth is called as endogenic force whereas the force that occurs or that works on the surface of the earth is called as exogenic force means the internal force uh, which goes inside the crust inside the core that is endogenic whereas the force which is reacted on the surface from the inner side is called as exogenic force now we'll study about how the earth movement is changing and how the landforms are created so there are hills mountain plateau valleys which the landforms which we see on the surface of the earth now why they are created they are created because of the force which are exerted on the earth now the internal processes are classified into two movements one is slow and other is sudden so there is always a continuous change in the earth's surface because the earth is always in a motion now these changes they occur because of the tension and compression which uh, which the tectonic plates make in the internal of the earth crust however their effects may be seen on the surface also even though the changes are created inside the earth surface uh, you can see the change on the surface of the earth also so the formation of mountain and the distribution of continents are also related to the slow movement so uh, how the continent is formed or how the uh, continents are created this is uh, particularly under the slow movement there are also sudden processes now uh, the sudden processes they take place within a fraction of second which is not at all noticeable what are the example of sudden movement earthquake and volcanic eruption which uh, they take place so suddenly so volatilely that we don't understand exactly at uh, within a fraction of second it happens so these are also called as the sudden movement now we'll study about the evidences so the landforms were never permanent in the nature they keep on changing it happens like that that uh, uh, means after 10 to uh, 100 to 200 years back you might have seen a hill at some place but now it is not present so these are the things which happens and this is why the landform gets uh, changed okay they always keeps on changing there are evidences to indicate that the earth movement has taken place in the past and has affected the surface of the earth so there are the examples of great tsunami in 2004 then uh, the three ranges in himalayas that is sikhois middle himalayas and greater himalayas again there is an volcanic eruption eyewitness uh, in the place of iceland 
and in the megapod also there was a tsunami crisis so there are some places where the landform is completely changed because of some natural calamities like uh, earthquake like volcanic eruption like tsunami waves or like landslides so because of that that particular uh, area has undergone a tremendous change now we'll see about the types of movement so based on the movements it is basically divided into sudden and slow now what is sudden movement the fo besides the folding and faulting movement responsible for the formation of fold mountains and block mountain respectively there are other movements in the earth crust now due to some internal forces at the times the movement occurs suddenly the earthquake and volcanic eruption are the types of the movements which are episodic in nature so any type of movement which occurs suddenly and very fast it doesn't occur slowly 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 it occurs suddenly they are called as sudden movements and it is basically seen in the case of earthquake and volcanic eruption next is slow movement the earth's movement which are the result of internal forces or the tectonic movements the movements which bring about the changes in the earth's crust gradually taking hundred to thousands of years and which cover a period much longer than a human lifespan are called as slow movement now slow movement they take place so slowly that even a human's full lifespan will be gone but these movements will be carried away okay so a uh, human can survive till 80 years even the 80 years uh, time span is not enough for the slow movement they keep on going on so these movements act on the earth's crust either vertically or horizontally so slow movements can be of two types one is vertical and second is horizontal so based on these directions they are also called as like vertical is called as epirogenic and horizontal is called as orogenic now we'll study about the slow movements it is very important to understand these movement because they are created because of the tectonic plates in the figure you can see that there is a stanosphere lithosphere so how the movements are created and how the continental crust is uh, upgraded or there is an uh, elevation in between so based on the direction the vertical and horizontal movements uh, are been uh, the two types of the slow movements now we'll see about the vertical movement how it exactly work uh, due to the forces in the interior of the earth and the travel of energy these movement occurs so basically it occurs because of the force which is in the interior of the earth crust now slow movements keeps on taking place either towards the center of the earth or away from the it towards the crust so they keep on moving from middle to sideways due to such movement an extensive portion of the crust is either raised up or it subsides so basically when these movements are going on from right to left left to right uh, so in such situation the middle area is either risen up there is an elevation as you can see in the image or the middle portion gets subsided means it goes down so when a proportion of the crust is risen up it forms a continent and hence it is also called as continent building movement so whenever there is an elevation then it creates a continent because of that vertical movements are also called as continent building movements such movements can also cause the formation of extensive plateaus though these movements are slow they influence huge area and these movements are not related to the development of tension or the pressure in the earth crust so apart from continent even the plateaus are created with the help of vertical movement now we'll study about the horizontal movement so the horizontal movement works in an horizontal manner and they are also called as orogenic movements so these movements works in an horizontal direction as per the direction it moves in the way of tension and compression in the rock strata 
These movements lead to either folds or cracks in the surface. These movements give rise to the mountains and the movement is very a slow movement. So in the case of horizontal, it is either upwards or downwards. So in this case, basically when it, uh, when it gets elevated, then a mountain is created, a fold is created. But their speed is more than the continental building. So as compared to the continental building, which happens in the vertical movement, it takes a lot of time. But the mountains are uh, created very quickly. These movements produce either folds or falls. Consequently, either fold mountains or block mountains are formed. So basically, if there is a tension created, then the fault is created. And if a compression is seen, then a fold is created, which is called as mountain. So they are also called as mountain building processes. So vertical movements are called as continental building and horizontal movements are called as mountain building processes. So these forces are further divided into tensional force and compressional force. So in the diagram you can see that epirogenic that is your vertical movement is called as epirogenic. It is also called as continental building and the horizontal movement is called as orogenic. It is also called as mountain building. So epirogenic is upward downward whereas orogenic is tensional and compressional forces. Now we will study about endogenic forces. Now endogenic forces sometimes produce a sudden movement and on the other times produces a slow movement. So both the movements are coming from endogenic processes. The horizontal and vertical movement caused by these processes or forces coming from the origin of the earth is called as endogenic forces. So any type of movement whether it is horizontal or whether it is vertical it is caused by some force which is coming from the origin of the earth. So that force is called as endogenic force. The origin of the endogenic force is usually caused by the contraction and expansion of the rock due to the variator in the thermal conditions and the temperature inside the earth. So as we have mantle, we have core, upper mantle, inner mantle. So these cores or these uh, proportions of the earth's uh, interior, they have a different different temperature. So because of the variation in the temperature, there are the forces which are created inside the earth crust. Sudden movements like earthquake and volcanoes cause mass destruction over the surface of the earth while diastrophic movements are rather slow. Diastrophism refers to the deformation of the earth's crust and it is specially found in the case of folding and faulting. So as per the chart you can see that endogenic processes are divided into two parts that is slow movement and sudden movement. A slow movement is also called as diastrophism. Slow movement is further divided into two parts that is vertical and horizontal. Vertical is called as epirogenic that is continental building whereas horizontal is called as orogenic that is mountain building. Vertical is divided into two parts that is upward and downward as it takes place in a vertical direction whereas horizontal is divided into two parts forces of compression and forces of tension as it uh, takes place in a horizontal manner that is light, uh, right to left or left to right. In the case of compression the folds are created which are, uh, uh, which are later on called as mountains and in the case of tension the folds are created which later on creates a valley. Now we'll go in the sudden movement. The sudden movement is further uh, the examples are volcanism and earthquake which are the examples of sudden movement. So this is all the overall review of this video. So now we'll see about the tensional and compressional forces which are uh, basically seen in mountain building processes. So what is tensional force? Whenever the force it moves away from each other and causes a stress 
in the rock strata then we call it as a tensional force they don't come close to each other they always move away from each other so in such case what happens there is a stress created in between which makes that particular rock to rupture or to uh, get a fracture or a crack so that is called as a fault now this leads to a crystal fracture and the formation of fault so rift valley or a block mountain is always a example of tensional force the second force is the compressional force now in this case it it works exactly opposite to your tensional force so any time if the forces they move towards each other then such forces are called as compressional forces they attract each other so during these forces the movements they cause a folding and in such type of folding or uh, the lot of material is tried to be occupied in a small place so these forces causes the pressure on the layer of the rock which later on leads to the folding and also the faulting on some of the surfaces so we'll see about the diagram of tension and compression so in uh, both the diagrams you can see that in the case of compression the arrows are uh, directed towards each other means a large uh, amount of uh, material is tried to be uh, fit in in a small uh, area which makes that material to get elevated or to raise up and in the case of tension uh, in both the direction the materials are being stretched away so because of that in middle there is a lot of stress and that creates a fault that creates a uh, crack so this is how the tension and compression forces work so this is all about earth movements and the type of earth movements uh, so i hope it was this video was helpful to you all thank you for watching do subscribe the channel